Hi guys, we're back and we're set up to show you some of the features of the Smart Bus and I'll hand you back to Brendan. Yeah, so we've set up a Smart Bus Extreme now with two Boomer RC Lion 2800s. Um, you'll be able to see them there. And we're just going to go through a quick setup video and show off some of the features of the Smart Bus. Uh, once we've got everything plugged in, so your screen and your batteries, we'll just turn it on. And with this one, it's a little bit interesting. We've got a, a remote fob switch, so this will actually turn the Smart Bus on. Okay. And that's doing it by remote. So the remote um, remote switch thing, that's an option on it the is. actual smart bus. Yeah. Okay. We'll go into the details of this a bit later, um, but that's a new feature for this smart bus and mm -hmm. for some future products too. All right, let's have a look at this screen. So when you first turn the smart bus on, this is our main flight screen or our battery screen. You can see the voltage of both the batteries, the regulated voltage, the milliamps used out of both packs. So we've used 100 milliamps out of each pack roughly. The milliamps you've used for this flight in the blue the flight timer in the red, and the flight number in the uh, yellow, okay? So we'll go into the, we'll start off with a quick setup video, and we'll go into the main screen. This is actually a touch screen. Um, it's a color touch screen, as you can see, and this can be either mounted in the plane or removed if you want to save a bit of weight, and then actually added back on when you want to check your batteries. Cool. So we'll go into our programming screen. This is our main menu. You can see you've got power, servo, and system. Um, we'll start with power. That's where you set your regulator voltage and uh, set up for your batteries. So, as you can see, we've got your battery capacity, which you set for your specific batteries. Depending on what batteries you, you use, um, they can be the 2800s, 1300s. You just set that number to whatever battery pack. Okay, use. so th this at the moment is set to 5000, mm -hmm. um, but we're using 2800s. So you would set that to 2800s, yeah? That is correct. Not yeah. the capacity of both batteries, but the capacity of one battery. That's correct. Right. Yeah. Okay. And that shows on the front screen um, as the battery's empty, those those batteries on the front screen empty. Is that how it works? That is correct, okay. yeah. Okay. So um, you might have noticed, we'll go back to it in a bit, but you might have noticed there's two battery symbols on the, the screen. Mm -hmm. They will actually drain as the batteries get used. Right. So moving on to the regulator, you've got a servo voltage selector, and that's actually showing the regulator voltage there in the white. Mm -hmm. And you'll notice that there's three buttons here, 8.4 volts, mm -hmm. 7.2 volts, and 6 volts. Uh, the 8.2 volts you might notice is greyed out, and 8, that's 8.4 8.4 yeah, volts okay. is greyed out, and that's for your Extreme 3S. Okay. So that that's only available if you're running the Extreme 3S, and you've got 3S LiPos connected, yeah? That is correct. Right. Okay. This is a, an Extreme, it's not the 3S version, so mm -hmm. we've limited to the 7.2 or the 6 volt. Right. And uh, we'll show you how to change the regulator now. Currently it's set to 7.3 volts, and if we hit the 6 volt button, it shows up a warning, um, ensuring that you know that your servos are 6 volt capable or 7.2 volt capable. Oh, so that's just a safety message that sort of says make sure that your servos are capable of the voltage you're going to set it to. Yep. Yeah, okay. 100%. So a lot of servos these days are high voltage servos. They're capable of handling 8.4 volts, mm -hmm. but some are still only 6 volt regulated. Right, so you, you wouldn't go setting at 7.2 if you had 6 volt servos. Okay, you'd bail out at that point. Yeah. Correct, yeah. But so, we've, we've selected 6 volts, so we're going to proceed, yeah? Yep, so okay. we'll hit yes, and you might notice that the screen is changing. Oh, look at that. The voltage is going down. Mm -hmm. And it'll go all the way down to 6 volts, okay. and the screen comes back. So you can reset the, the voltage to either 6 volts or 7.2 volts after the regulator is set. So we'll because we're using Lions, and uh, we're going to be using... Uh, high voltage servos in this setup will hit 7.2 volts mm -hmm. and it'll show the message again hit yes and it'll come and it back comes up. back up so you probably do that only once before you plug in any servos yeah yeah so, okay, so it's gone 73 to back to 72 cool. what, what we recommend is when you first get your smart bus obviously everyone likes to unbox and have a play you plug in your batteries you set your regulator then you can plug in your receiver and your so servos. pretty much i'll just pan out so pretty much what we're seeing here you know so you set up have a bit of a play around then you get real and start plugging servos in and matching and all that sort of stuff yep. yeah okay 100 percent. so now that we've set the uh, regulator voltage to save that we hit the return button mm -hmm. and that saves the fact that the regulator has been changed right okay now uh, if we go into our servos this is uh, where we do our matching so our three point our 14 point matching mm -hmm. um, and you might notice that if i'll try and get these both into shot that the buttons on the screen here actually align up with the coloured outputs. Oh, okay, so at the bottom there, um, input receiver input one just here, mm -hmm. aileron one A, aileron one B, and over here we've got aileron one B. So if I wanted to 
um, servo match 1B, mm -hmm. I'd go into aileron 1B, yeah? That's correct. Okay, so that's straightforward. aileron 1B will do this, and this would be set up for either left and right um, servos or inside and outside servos on an aileron. Oh, okay. So like a master and a slave, yeah. So what, you set the master, the throw of the master on your radio, mm -hmm. so you do that first, and then you'd go and match aileron 1B being your outboard aileron. Yep, yep that's okay. correct. So we'll go into aileron 1B now, and this is our three-point matching. Okay. So the three-point matching comes available on the Elite, the Extreme, and the and the Extreme 3S. So all of the Smart Bus has three-point matching. Yep. And this this um, uses the software um, out of the IntelliMatch, um, the algorithm, all that smoothing that's in there with the 8,000-point um, curves and all that sort of stuff, doesn't it? It does, yep. Um, our system is fairly in intelligent. It doesn't, you don't have to tell it where the uh, servo is. Mm -hmm. It does it by the signal on your radio. So we'll go through it quickly. Um, we've got a save, we've got a reverse or a normal, we've got a reset, and we'll go into the multi, which is the 14 point matching. We'll go into that in just a second. Okay. Um, it's very, very simple to set up. All you do is once you've got both servos plugged into your smart bus, mm -hmm. um, the, you just hit the increment, and, and that'll be that'll be moving the slave servo against the master. It will. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah. Um, another another interesting feature for these is um, you can set these up on a left and right wing as well, or a left and right elevator, or um, if you need to reverse your servo, so mm -hmm. one's going one way and one's going the other oh, way. Like flaps or slats or spoilers or, or yeah. Okay, exactly. Pro. And yeah. all you do is you just hit the reverse button. Okay. And it'll go to normal. Right. So that reverses the actual. That 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 makes both servos go the same way. Hundred yep. percent. Yep. And reverse would reverse your slave against your master. Ex okay. Exactly. Cool. So that's for your five main prog programmable outputs. Mm -hmm. um, and now we'll go into the multi. So the multi is a fourteen point match. Wow. Um, this is available on the three S uh, and the extreme, and it it allows you to finely tune the uh, differences in your servos. So it doesn't matter how good your servos are, no two servos are exactly the same. Mm -hmm. and this helps Well, mechanical get throw and all that sort of stuff plays in there, doesn't it? Yep. So if I was setting up an elevator, and you know, I've had experience where, where you, know, you have two servos on elevator, one's going one way, one's going the other way, mm -hmm. and they're never the same, and you try and dial them in, but you never quite get it right. Is, would this help that at all? This is exactly what that's designed for. Ah. So this will help you get the throws exactly the same all the way to the endpoints, the center, and anywhere in the 14 points. Okay, so on flaps, I get no more roll effect anymore and all that sort of stuff. As the flaps come down, I can just dial it all out. Exactly. Brilliant. Yep. Yeah, so it works exactly the same as the three-point matching. I'll just hit the increment button. You notice that the center one's going up, mm -hmm. okay? And then once you're happy with the uh, the way you've set it up, the 14-point match, mm -hmm. you hit back to go back into the three-point and save, and that'll save those values. Okay, just one point. How do I actually select the points? Can we go just go back in there quickly? And yep. just, I need to ask that question. Yep. So I've got 14 points there. How do mm -hmm. I select one? What do I do, touch it on the screen or...? or... No. So it works off the transmitter stick. It, we use an intelligent system that gets the whole range of your um, transmitter. Um, and as you move the transmitter stick, you'll notice that these bars actually move up and down and change color. Oh, okay. Um, so you just move the transmitter stick to where you want the control surface, and then you just use the increment decrement button. Yep. That's and, and the bars are there just to show you some, some eye candy, which is pretty cool eye candy, you know. But, yep. yep. Okay, yep. cool. Okay. So then we'll go back and save, mm -hmm. and we'll save those values back again mm -hmm. and we'll give you a quick show of the systems page the systems page is uh, shows you a bit of information on the smart bus the credits and it will and it includes the factory reset and this touchscreen calibration oh, so factory reset if you want to move it from one model to another or you all get it all gets too funky and you want to get back to factory just hit that one and it'll go yeah okay yep okay cool. so we'll go back to the main flight screen now okay and you'll notice that the values have all changed there so you've got 7.4 volts still on the batteries regulated at 7.2 the number that we've used for the total milliamps has increased, and we've mm -hmm. used 20 milliamps out of each pack. Well, no, they're pretty one. accurate. There's 20 milliamps coming out of each um, uh, each pack there. Yeah. Those boomer packs must be pretty good batteries. <laughs> <aren't> they? <laughs> yeah, they are. Um, and we use a perfect diode technology as a battery sharing, so you get uh, the absolute out of both of your packs, both the absolute power and the milliamps. So I can't help but notice, Brendan, there's, uh, when looking at the smart bus, there's this little blue... Um, knob thing on the side, what's that for? So as you can see it says ignition there um, mm -hmm. and as a feature for the smart bus range we actually include the option of... Can we getting... put it down just behind the, the screen? Yeah. Down behind the screen? That's it. There we go. Um, include the option of an optical ignition system. Oh, okay, so that uses like a, an optical light pipe 
technology and it um, does it have its own battery it needs its own battery supply yes yep, okay. um, but it is a regulated system so that's regulated to six volts right and that can be used on any ignition system so that that looks like it's a single unit mm -hmm. can you get it for a twin you sure can um, mm -hmm. if you're running a twin ignition system or a twin motor system um, we will do a twin ignition for you as well okay cool okay um, so that is actually directly connected to input 12 on here. Mm -hmm. um, this channel oh, this channel here, input 12 from yep. your receiver, yep. um, is to toggle the ignition and it also works for channel 12. Okay, so if you there. don't go for the optical ignition option and you, you know, you're a turbine pilot, you could use that for ECU kill or whatever you want. Correct, yeah. Okay, cool. Yep. So we mentioned when we started that the smart bus range has two switching options. Um, the pin flag switch, which is oh, some may people know, uh, which is a scale switch. It comes with our flag and our pin flag. Yep. Okay. And that plugs directly into the switch port just there. Okay. But as a new feature, we've got our remote fob switch. So oh, that's okay. this one here. Um, and this is a, similar to a car fob. Okay. And it can turn your smart bus on and off remotely. Right. So a couple of features. We've made it so it's got a clippable plastic shroud so it can't be turned on and off when you don't want it to. Okay, so you turn it over for me? Yeah. Yeah, okay, so it's just a stock standard fob, but mm -hmm. there's no way you can hit those buttons when it's in your pocket or in your tranny case or wherever you want to keep it. Yep, okay. Or on your transmitter. Yeah, so okay. I'll slide that back and you'll notice that the screen, I'll bring, bring the screen here, is on yep. and we'll just turn it off by hitting C and D. And okay, that so the system goes off. Yep. yep, and to turn it back on, we'll hit A and B and the system comes back on again. Okay. So a couple of safety features with the, uh, the remote fob, it's got a range of about 5 metres or 30 feet. Um, and there's a time delay between the button presses. Okay. So to turn this off, if I hit C and wait a second and then hit D, it won't turn off. Mm -hmm. um, it has to be done within, within half to one second mm -hmm. uh, button press. The other interesting thing is we've got a million codes for these fobs. And, uh, oh, so each one's coded at the factory? Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we, we code these with a unique identifier, which means you can't turn them on and off with your car and vice versa. Right. Okay. Excellent. Well, look, thanks, uh, thanks for that overview. That's, uh, it looks like a pretty neat product. Um, can't wait to get it in my plane. Um, I've heard you've been doing a bit of uh, 3D with yours, and you've got a couple of models that you're getting ready to take over to uh, the US for uh, Top Gun and Joe Nell. Yep, so our smart bus system will be in both of those models, um, both at Joe Nell and at Top Gun. If you come over and have a chat with us, we'd be happy to talk to you about our entire range, including the smart bus and some of our batteries as well. Um, good, good stuff. Um, thanks for your time, and uh, let's um, hope we can catch up on some other products soon. Yep. Okay. See you then. Bye.